So today we are going to learn how to model the CT specimen using node release technique and uh, we are going to do it for creep crack growth. So this is the kind of uh, specimen which we will be modeling. I already have an orphan mesh so we will be just uh, focusing at the python scripting part where we can uh, uh, you know arrange different number of nodes to be released so that it follows the crack growth behavior which is observed in the experiment so this is a different model so i'll delete it and this is our ct specimen so this is half symmetric and this is in two dimension which we are going to model and it is already meshed so we don't have to change all those and I'm not going in uh, meshing and all those things here so I have kept the mesh regular at the crack tip and of the same size throughout the ligament so that we don't have to bother about the about the number of node uh, resulting in different amount of crack lengths. So now let us look at the experimental data and we, need, we don't need to bother right now what kind of material it is, what material it is, it's a metallic material but those details uh, will not be shared, what material properties are given. Uh, we will just see how the node release has to be done. So from the experiment we have got time and the amount of crack length which has happened. This is not in a proper format, so I will just format it. So now I have put this in proper format, so I will delete this part and also this part. So we have crack length which has happened over different duration of time and this was under constant load. So, uh, so whatever is the load value that is not of our consideration right now. So this is our initial crack length and we have to find out what is the amount of delta A which is happening. So delta A meaning the crack extension so that will be simply the value of crack length which we have right now minus the initial crack length and then we have the value of delta A. Now the problem is that our uh, our mesh is such that we have to release nodes at certain uh, time period and which we will do it by creating different number of steps and in each step we will be releasing certain node. So we need to know what is the size of the element. So the element size I guess will be 0 0.05 it is uh, 0 0.05 millimeter so <coughs> so one element is 0 0.05 millimeter so we can only increase the crack length in the integral uh, multiplication of this value which is 0 0.05 millimeter and we cannot generate uh, crack lens of 0.223 or 0.291. So in order to do that we have to have uh, values which are uh, which are divisible by 0 0.05. So in order to do that I need to plot this and we need to create data out of the experimental data. So how do we do that? Let us uh, create this delta A versus uh, time plot. So, so let me select the. So we will have to find out uh, at each delta A what should be the value of time. So at each delta A what should be the value of time. So time will be on y axis. So I will have on x axis delta A and on y axis I will have time which is in hours. So I have h 
column and y axis. Okay, so so this is how it looks like. It's, it's not bad. Like only the only the uh, point on the zero zero is a little offset from the whole curve, but apart from that everything is good and we don't have any value and this range from 0 to 0.2 uh, so 0.2 is the amount of crack length which has happened 0 0.203 and in between we don't have any value so I don't want to have any value there either because experimentally that has not been captured so I'll delete the first point 0, 0 is gone and now I will fit it uh, through a polynomial so order 2 is not looking great order 3 is looking good enough already so it is matching all the data points so that part is done I want the equation of this so this is the equation which describes y as the value of time and x is the value of delta a so with this graph, I'm going to generate my delta uh, a values, and I am going to have, let us say, uh, the time value which will be required in hours. So I want to have, I will have zero delta a for the first place in the model. So for that, I don't have to do anything. And let us say that I want to release. Um, and I also want to have the crack growth velocity dA by dt a little different. So I don't want to I don't want to have same crack growth velocity, but that I cannot change, I guess. So we will add just you know one element. So we will release the nodes one by one, and for that we will have to add 0 0.05 and this delta a will go to 1.25 and what is the maximum 1.747 it has gone in experiment so let us go till 1.747 is 1.75 so we will go till 1.75 and time we can find out using this equation so time will be equals 109 point nine into into this to the power three and we should close it in a bracket and then plus oh minus and four thirty nine point four eight into M thirteen and then plus 632.38 into m13 I believe it should be that so, so and minus 89.846 and why this is negative because it is zero so zero value i don't have to take the rest of the things will be okay but the rest of the things are not okay so oh so until point two it will be giving wrong values to me because experimentally we didn't capture any value before uh crack length of point two zero three so these we cannot do so we have to jump straight from ok control z and then i need to copy this and i'll paste it here and i will say value and number formatting only then i'll delete this okay and so you see that experimentally the first delta was 0 0.203 and when we put 0, 00 point here then it was uh, following not this trend so we cannot use this equation between the value of 0.2 to 0 so this data we have to delete just before 0.2 and it so, so this 
So this is also changing. So I'll copy this and I'll paste it here. And then I'll delete the rest of the things. Okay. So this becomes my delta A and this is my time and the first value will be zero because there cannot be any grad growth uh, because of creep so zero and this i believe is creep time i'm not sure sure maybe this experimental analysis gives me the total time but mm, usually in experiment they of set the time to zero in the beginning of the grad growth so it should be creep time only so in simulation we will have to load i mean we will have to add the value of the time which is there in the loading step because we will be applying force there so now we are done okay so now we have to do these amount of delta a so how many number of nodes we will have to release so you can see here so for instance in step one there will be no node release and there will be just boundary condition applied for the loading condition then in step 2 we will be releasing how many nodes we will be releasing 0 0.05 into 4 number of nodes so we'll have four number of nodes releasing here then we will release one node here and one 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 and so on so we are not going to change the uh, velocity here so it's going to be one always only in the step one there will be four number of nodes which will be released okay so number of nodes now this is what we have to implement in our model so let us look at this model in this model previously there were some uh, node release done using different value of node being released at different node sets so you will just have a look how this was done in a very brief way so if you look at this uh, tree here so we have created 23 steps and in each step we released some nodes so if you go to boundary condition so let us go to boundary condition and then you will have a value of force which is applied on this pinhole so at the reference point and if you look at this so you will see that a force of uh, 3500 newton was applied so 3.5 kilonewton was applied this was for a different test so don't bother about the force value and uh, so it begins from the viscous step so straight away the force is applied and nothing happens there and then we have step 3 and the force remains like that and then in other steps if you look what we have is we have varying boundary condition for the crack plane so if you look at this here so in the step 2 we have So in the step two we have oh this is a different boundary condition so this these nodes are under y symmetry okay and then in step three what we have in the next step you see that certain one element is released then in step four one more element is released and then if you go further more number of nodes are being released okay so this is how this uh, thing is done we create n number of steps and in each step we just remove this boundary condition from certain nodes and the crack growth simulation happens so in order to do that efficiently we need to write a code and that code uh, we have somewhere so so let me just open this 
So, so this is a Python scripting which is written in this format and it's not very difficult. We will go through this code one by one and we are going to change it for our own uh, experimental data and we will see how to do it. So, uh, okay, so this matrix here, so XC, YC and ZZ are the coordinate of the crack tip. So first we have to make sure that our coordinate value is, um, so our coordinate of the crack is still that. So let us have a look at, let us have a look at the crack tip coordinate. So here is my crack tip or no. So I have to go in a step 2. So step 2 is there. So this is my coordinate. So I will keep it closer to the letter Y and I will find out what is the coordinate of this. So point and then I select this one and then I say done. And then you see in the message box here, I don't know if it is big enough or not. The value is 25.85 minus 6.25 and 0. So 25.85 minus 6.25. So it is 25.8 minus 6.25. Okay, so I think this we are at a place where one node is already released. I don't know why step 1 is not there. It should have been there. Otherwise, how the load will be applied? In the loading condition, the load will be applied instantaneously, maybe. Okay. Okay, fine. So, our coordinate of the crack tip is correct. And then B is a, a null matrix here. We'll see what is happening there. And this is the amount of node release which will be happening every time, but we don't need it right now because we know that. For the first instance, we have to uh, we have to make a node release of four number of nodes, and afterwards we have to only release it by one. So I don't think we need to have this matrix anymore. So I'll comment it out, and then we have this for loop which goes from uh, step number one plus one two. So it will start from step number two, and it will go until the final step. So how many number of steps we have to make will depend on how many number of so how many number of steps we have to make will depend on the number of crack lengths we have to do. So so this is the initial step. This is the initial step we are not going to do anything there. Okay so so if this is one step which we are going to make then then we will be needing 32 steps except the initial one we need to make 32 number of steps so this will go from 1 to 33 no 32 no, I think we have to make how many? We have to make 32. So it will go from 231. There can be some mistakes, but we will see at then. So this will be from 1 to 31. And first step is already made, so we don't have to do anything there. And this line is creating a variable step which takes the string step and add another string which names the step number. So i begins from 1. So it is already having a value of 1. And then it adds 1 to it. So the first step which will be created will be step number 2. And then I don't know why there is this p step formation. Okay. So p step is previous step. And previous step is just a number less from the current step. And TP is the time period for the step. 
for this step. So in each step we have to create time period also. And this is the time which we need. And the time is, is what we have here in this time format. So this is the time we need. Okay. And we need to put this time somehow in the in the in the code. So I will copy this and I'll make a matrix here which will be my time matrix. So I'll just write time or maybe time is used somewhere so um, so I will make it summer so that there is no confusion and we cannot do like this so control Z and I have to put um, semicolon here and at the end I don't have to but a square bracket and now I will copy this and then I'll paste it here and we're done so our time matrix is done and it should have uh, same number of components so the first so TP will be basically summa I so summa I and I'm not so sure if this notation so let me just check it in the in the Python shell so Python shell is you know that it's just below the, the backers uh, this thing invalid syntax okay so sum is equal to bracket if I write one two no if I write one colon two colon three colon and oh I think I'm using MATLAB sub uh, this thing syntax so maybe it's one two three and then if I write some i which will be let's say two oh so some i two is three okay so it start from zero okay so there there has to be some changes in the syntax it cannot be it cannot be colon because it's not MATLAB so we have to put comma here and instead of putting square bracket we have to use small bracket so I'll copy this again and I will change here also to small bracket control B and it's done and now here I will write tp is equal to somewhere i if I write then it will take from 1 because i is starting from 1 so I have to write i minus 1 okay and uh, <coughs> tp is done now I have to see if the model name is model minus 1 this is what we have to make sure because usually we make files in uh, CAE and then we change it so I don't think the model name will be model 1 because it's ccg underscore igcar2 underscore 15 hours so this is the name which I have to give ccg underscore igcar2 so ccg underscore igcar2 and then underscore 15 hrs underscore 15 hrs so this is done now i think and then viscous step name is equal to step so step 
becomes this variable which is step 2 previous step is step 1 time period is tp and then maximum uh, increment 1000 initial increment 0 0.001 and c tall i have given 0 0.001 and now changing y symmetry by 1 node so so now this for loop the first for loop is creating all the steps okay I don't know why we are creating. Are we creating further steps? No. So now we go to the next step where we are assigning boundary conditions. Okay. So here we are making node sets and we are naming boundary conditions. So we will see what is happening here. We will see what is happening here also. So we have to change it to 1 to 31, isn't it? Yes. Then step is okay and nsim is the node set where we have to define the symmetry. BC sim is the boundary condition name which says that this is the symmetric boundary condition and history output has to be created and assembly model 1 we have to change this to ccg so the name of the model so this will be there and then part minus 1 minus 1 is correct i believe yes it's part minus 1 minus 1 but i think it's in caps so i'll write part minus 1 minus 1 now tt is equal to tell m i it is taking tt is equal to tell m i let us see where it is going with this. Now it is making the node set where the boundary condition must be created. So if you want to have a look, let us have a look. So if you have a look at the node sets, you see this nsim2. So nsim2 is simply these node sets where the y symmetric boundary condition is applied. Okay, and these are the node sets which is being made so that that can be used. So we are going to take we are going to make these node sets the so node set uh, is made by get by bounding box command this is a very good uh, command and it basically simply means that if you want to make a node set then you go to nodes and then continue and then you s drag your mouse like this and select all the nodes right when you drag this you see this white box and this is exactly this 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 is exactly what the code does it also captures all the nodes made by a box that's why the name is get by bounding box and the box is defined in this code by the minimum xy coordinate and maximum xy coordinate so this is what we are going to do so here the initial minimum value will be uh, the point where the crack tip is you want to keep the crack tip and the end of the ligament okay so first value is zero at the crack tip which is at x x c okay now the second one the first value we have to make at four number of elements we have to release okay so for we cannot do this in one for loop so instead we have to uh, change this tellm we might need to use this tellm once so or we have to write an if statement somewhere so we'll have to write an if statement somewhere so here we'll write we'll have to write if uh, if this step is so if or we can say that if i um but i don't know the syntax for the logic operators in python so if i equals two then if i equals so let me just check what is the syntax for the for loop so So, for loop in Python. Right 
No, not for loop. If 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 loop. If statement. Not loop. If statement. So So here it is, if a equals equals b, then do that, else if, or else, and they don't end it. Oh, there is no need to end, okay, fine. So we'll do, we'll try that. So if i equals equals 2, in the first value i is equal to 1, so we have, we are talking about first step only. So if i equals equals 1 and how do you write then? I think there's a colon. No? So, so there is a colon and then you write the command which you want to do. So this is equal to that. Then tt, I have to put a tab and tt equals 4. Point zero. Okay. Then I don't think there is a. I don't think there is a colon or anything. No. And then enter. If this is the case, then that else. Else. So after else, is there a colon? Hmm. Yeah. Else. And tab dt equals 1.0. So this simply means that if i is equal to 1, that is step number 1, we have to release, step number 2, we have to release 4 nodes, and other than that, we have to release only 1 node. Okay, so this is what it is done. So I don't need this line, so I'll comment this out. And now x is equal to dt into 0 0.05, so that is number of nodes. Uh, into the element size which is 0 0.05 rest of the things will not matter much and the last value is the uh, is the length of the ligament I believe that is 50 so there also we don't have to do anything we only have to change this part which is done and region is defined then we have to change the model name and there are too many model name here and there so I will just use find and replace command and I will put model 1 in find what and ccg underscore blah 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 and replace with and replace all so all of those are replaced and then it does that and it does that and region model region model done and at the end x e oh so new crack tip so every time it is shifting x e becomes the new crack tip location okay so at the end x e will be x e plus dt into this b append i so i don't know what is getting appended in b b matrix is appending all the i values for some reason why then there is another loop which says that for j in the range of this step is equal to step j plus 1 the parallel mdb has deactivate okay so this is for deactivating that we will <sighs> that we will see because eventually what happens that if we apply a boundary condition in certain step like this then they are propagated in the coming forthcoming steps also so we need to make them deactivated because there will be two y symmetry boundary conditions applied on two different node sets for instance if i create this uh, boundary condition step 2 and then i keep on doing it for step 9 
So you will create all this, all right, but step two will be propagated instead of being inactive. It will be propagated till here. So you need to inactive that. Okay. That we will see if that happens. But that part of code, this part of code is for that only. So I'll just change it to 3 1 and nothing should matter. There are certain things which we need to do in this model is that we need to release this node sets because they might interfere with our uh, current changes which we are planning to do. And we need to release the boundary and uh, delete the boundary conditions and steps also. So step 2 I want to keep and I will change that step 2 and rest of the steps I will delete. Okay. And in step 2, so now let us look at the boundary conditions. So step 2 basically has no crack length, no crack growth. So if I look at the force is applied there and boundary condition should be keeping all the nodes which is not here so there is no boundary condition here and what is this boundary condition this is probably for the model not to move in x direction on the reference point okay so this should be the uh, initial crack length so can we not do that I think we can do that also we can do this also in the code somehow so we can create step 1 as well and uh, in a step step 1 force is already applied we just need to apply this boundary condition okay yeah so let it be like this and i will just uh, remove this displacement bc2 from here i will have to delete this because that is not needed so this i will delete okay and i will this is step two i will rename it to step one okay because this is the first step so that is done and uh, now let us go to the code and here I want to begin so step 1 is already there nothing is to be done there oh but step 1 will have how much time period see that much amount of node is being released so this much crack length happens at this point of time right this much crack length happens at this point of time and so so when this number of nodes are released this much time has already passed so for step one this should be the time 19.93 hours And then for the next one, so first step we should have 19.93 hours. So that is equal to this. And then for next we should have this minus this. So this much amount of hours. And at the end we have to go like that. With this much time has passed and this much crack growth happened okay so this much time should pass for that node release to happen and at the end there is no crack growth at the end what is the crack growth so this much crack growth has happened at this many hours and after that there is no crack growth happening so we have to shift this a little bit up like this and 
then at the end I don't know maybe we'll, we'll fix the same amount of hours for the last value also okay and and we have to use this time period rather than the one which we used previously so control v and in the first step so so step is equal to that and this is this this and all those things are happening step is being created so let us start this from zero so then i is zero so first step will be made and the previous step will not be okay there has to be a previous step so this we cannot do here so control z 131 is okay okay 131 is okay rest of the things are okay first value has to no it should be there the last value has to get out isn't it no no first value has to get out okay and now what do we have to do is we have to make certain changes so we have to create a step first so this cannot be step two so a rename it's the step two for time being and now create a step which will be a loading step so after initial name will be step one and this will not be a creep step it will be a general static step continue and the time period has to be very small so i'll make it 0.2 it's not big that small also and the uh, rest of the things are okay 0 0.002 and maximum will be 0 0.02 or 1 and other things are okay and in this step we need to apply we need to apply a load so we need to go to boundary condition and what is this this is load i guess no yeah no no so this we have to move left or move right and this we have to remain like this this will remain like that and uh, so we have displacement and then we have to apply force also no? so force is there already this i will just shift to step one propagate it to step two this is okay and then i need to apply the boundary condition for y symmetry for that i need to find out or i need to make an offset so I believe there will be some node set which was made already. Yeah. So this is the node set. I'm pretty sure that this is the point where the crack tip is. So it should have how much? It should have 25.8 x value. So let us just confirm that. We're done. Yeah. Now this is. That's 25.85 y it's 25.85 this is the character so No, this is 20 now. Why? No. No, this one. This is 20. 
not 25.85 why if this is 20 so what is the this is 20 what is the end point end point is this what everything cannot be 20 50 so 30 is the ligament length now but initial crack length is how much so we have to find out what is the what is the pin coordinate So pin coordinate is zero. So this is at zero. Yeah. Okay. So x axis is zero, and the first value of the crack tip has to be so that our initial crack length of twenty five point seven six is matched. Twenty five point seven six I don't think will be matching because it should be twenty five point seven five because our element size is like that. Mm -hmm. Any way, can we do that? So, our, so our crack tip should be at twenty five point seven six. So, this we have to correct. Twenty five point seven six will be twenty five point eight. So, that is correct. That is correct. But twenty five point eight, I don't believe, will be hitting a node anywhere, isn't it? Let me have to check. So this was 20 and if it is 0 0.05, so this is 1. 0 0.1, so 20.1, oh my god. We have to go far beyond here somewhere. So let us see what is the coordinate of this point. This is what? Twenty seven point five. So we have to find now how much twenty five point eight. So how much is this? Twenty six. So how much is this? Twenty six point five. Yeah, this one I am doing manually because I believe that will be a little less. Will be not using my brain too much. Twenty five point seven. So we are at twenty five point seven. We have to go at twenty five point eight. So that should be possible. So this should be twenty five point eight. This one. This one. Twenty five point seven? No. Twenty five point seven nine nine. So that is twenty five point eight only. Twenty five point seven nine nine. This one is okay. So this is my crack tip. Hmm. So I will make a node set. I will make a node set or I will change set 4. But maybe set 4 is being used somewhere. I'll make a new node set. Initial crack. We will continue and select a few right now like this. And a few more. And then a few more. And then a few more. And then a few 
I have selected and done and now I will apply the boundary condition for the initial crackling which will be symmetric boundary condition so I will name it initial symmetry and this should be in step 1 mechanical symmetry and where is where is the box okay so mesh sets initial crack highlight continue y symmetry okay done so our first boundary condition is applied now i will delete step two i believe the force is also there in step one yes i'll delete step two now delete not needed I didn't delete it first because then the boundary condition would have been lost because there will be no set. So now it's there. Now I'll run this code and there will be magic. So save as and uh, node release experimental not py and now uh, let me run this code. Run script. And we are here, 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 here. Okay, so there is a problem. Samai. There is a problem in Samai. Samai is not callable. Okay. Samai is not callable. Oh, yeah, I know why. I know why Samai is not callable. So it will be callable if I use square bracket here and here. Except that should be okay. Nowhere else we have used somewhere. So file, run script, and magic has happened. So in symmetric 2, I should have the crack tip after 4 number of nodes from 25.6. 25.8 right so 25.8 plus 0 0.2 so it should be 25.8 26 so the coordinate of this point should be 26 the coordinate of this point yeah it is 26 so we are good and then the next one will be just one node after that which is correct and one node after that correct 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 okay now let us look at the boundary conditions so let us go to load and the force should be applied for everything yeah so it is applied for all the steps propagated good now let us go to boundary condition so we have boundary condition we see all of them have been inactivated also by the code okay except the last one that we will do no worries okay so initial boundary condition and displacement is propagated because that we made and this displacement is which displacement this displacement is u1 so that has to be there and what is this this is initial y symmetry so that we have to make inactive in all these cases so deactivate so i can deactivate here also or not i have to activate from deactivate from step 2 onwards deactivate everything is deactivated good and this is another and the rest of the things are okay just at the end this one must be also deactivated and everything else is good everything else is good boundary condition has been applied force has been applied okay rest of the things are applied and 
this much I don't think anything else we need to we need to be we need to make sure so boundary condition has been applied load has been applied nothing should be done so let us just run this thing and see if it works it should work so except that if there is some problem in the, oh yeah we have to check the timings so the first crack growth should happen after 19.9 hours so this is what we have to see so the first step one is loading it to a time period of 0.2 after that step two is taking oh step two is, should not take 22 hours so there i have made some uh, change. step two yeah yeah step two should take 22 hours that is okay step two should take 22 hours because in step two one one of the node is already released but i have to create one more step just before this just before step two where 19 hours are passed and no crack length no crack is uh, what do you call it so I have to create step after step one and the name will be step creep with no crack growth creep with no crack growth and this will be a creep step so this go and the time for this will be so non linear geometry not and the time will be this 19.93 hours because you see for 19.93 hours see the first crack increment of 0 0.203 was noted after 19 hours how this 19.93 has come Yeah. That is 42.49. No, no, this. No, no, this is something. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. This has come from our uh, equation. Okay, yeah, okay. So 19.93 amount of power has to be there. So 19.93. Okay, increment can be 0 0.0. No, no, 0 0.1. And 0 0.1 would be too less. So here we can put, let's say, two hours. And so six increment will be there. And then 0 0.01. Go like that. Implicit, explicit number of increments thousand. It's okay. C top we have given. Yeah, that we can give 0 0.001. Okay. So then everything is okay okay good done dismiss and then job and now create ccg with node release experiment then let us see if it works properly So, hopefully, no, too many contouring details and blah blah. That I'm not bothered. Should work, that's it. Contouring details we can calculate later on also. So three steps have, uh, so the calculation is going on in third step. So we can have a look at some of the results. We don't have to solve it for the complete thing. So I'll just kill it here. Okay, so it's killed. And let us look at the results. So what are we expecting? We are expecting that in step two, there should be four number of release, which has happened. And step three, one, number of nodes must have 
in the case white is showing no frame so step one no frame oh god why why so what was that job going on what is this oh oh there was an error of field output variable so probably the field output variable was not there so we have to do that part also so field output variable is completely empty so oh we will have to do this for each step i don't know why this got deleted it usually it usually doesn't happen so step 1 continue and then whole model pre selected default and energy okay and then we have to do this so okay fine so let us do a little uh little coding again so the same thing what we uh what we have learned is whatever we want to do is we can do it by macro manager and we go to create work and continue and whatever we do will be recorded so in the python script format so what do we want to do we want to create field output request for different steps so there we want to select pre selected default and energy values and okay and that is done this is what we want to do so i'll stop recording and then i'll go to the I'll go to the work directory where our so work directory is here. So here we have backus macros, and if I open this, then you will see that the uh, field output request. How to create that is written in this line. and i just need to write this line that's it so we don't need to do anything else so I'll, how to turn it into code let's remove this definition part and we need to indent all these lines so oh so Decrease indent will be there. Indent, decrease indent. Yeah. So for all these lines, we need to decrease the line indent. Done. We don't need these two lines. Okay. We only need this line, and we need to put it in a for loop. Okay. So how many number of steps are there? One to thirty-one so far. so we can copy this from here or i in range like this so control v and then this we need to indent and this we need to indent indent so what will happen fill out request number 2 so this so we need to create a string for f out is equal to this plus str i plus 1 okay and then here we will write f out and the rest of the things will remain same 
file save as and then he will look s out of py and then we will just run this file run a script done so now you see that we have created the field output for all the steps okay have we done that i believe so so this is for no crack rows oh so we needed to change some lines here so here we need to keep the step name also so step is equals step uh, minus plus str i plus 2 because isn't it no no i plus 1 and here we have to write step and that's it save and these field output we have to delete from so 2 is for strip with crack no crack no? and this is for also for that oh. so we need to delete all this and this is for which step step with no character we need to create it for step 1 also Preselected defaults and energy done, and we need to create. We have created for the first two steps, and rest we don't have to do. So, rest for that, we just need to run the code. Okay, so this is for step one. Yes, this is for this is for step one, and this is for oh, both of them are for step one now. So step one, this we need to delete, and we need to create one for this step. We selected defaults. Okay. This is for that step. Why everything is changing? is for step 3 and 4 is for step 4 ok now let us run it history output is not requested in the following step I don't need history output yes ok with the job submission so let us see what happens for some time so let us have a look at the results so it has it is somewhere in between so it has crossed step 2 and the calculation is going on in step 3 this time I will not kill it and hopefully my computer will not hang so let us look at the results and yeah so it's visible and now we have to make sure that in the first step there are there must be four number of elements which were released and after that only one should be released so let me just exaggerate it or just you know increase the amount of scaling of deformation so that we can actually sh see what is happening and let us go to step one so step one was loading step so nothing happened there and a better way to have a look will be from here so step one so you see step one last frame this was the deformation then we go to step two and there also there was no crack growth because that was creep without crack growth 
because we wanted to pass 19.9 hours, 19.93 hours without crackdown. So nothing happened. It crept. That's it. That is what happened. Because load was constant and whatever deformation increment you saw from step 1 to so from here to here is because of the creep deformation. Okay, nothing else has happened, only creep deformation has happened. Step 2 now, in the very beginning, we should have 4 number of nodes released. So, not in frame 0, but in frame 1. So, we will see that now. Frame 1, you see from there to there, crack tip has left us. So, 1, 2, 3 and 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 number of node has been released. This is what we did, so that is good. Now in the just next step, no frame has formed, I don't know why, must have formed, so step 3, I have not killed it, step 3 is still going on, but it is not showing anything in there, so let us close this and go to job, go to results. And now let us see if they have written anything in step 3. Oh, this is step 3 is actually step 2 only. Yeah. So, we will have to wait until this. Yeah, in the job monitor, the numbering is different. So, this is counting total number of step. Our step 3 is actually step 4. So, when it will finish, then only we will be able to see the next number of node release but I think it's gonna work well because the first has worked first uh, in step first we have seen that four number of nodes are being released so this is going to work well so this code uh, I will put it on my website which you can go through IIT Ropa website so in order to go there what you have to do is you have to go to IIT Ropa website not this one iitrpr.ac.in not this one iitrpr.ac.in and nothing else and from there you go to department metallurgy and from there you go to people faculty and from there you go to uh, instead of going to faculty profile go to the lab profile computational fraction mechanics lab and on this um, I will put it in configurational force and fraction mechanics. Yeah, on this page, on the downside, I'll put this code somewhere, maybe uh, in one or two days. Okay, and if you have any problem, we will be able to resolve it. But this is only for node release technique and it can be used for any kind of node release technique it doesn't have to be creep but if it is not creep you need to change few things okay so that is it